Good morning, good morning, Dr. Gary on the road. We sell dental practices nationwide. Today's topic is, what are the consequences when the buyer and seller negotiate without the professionals? We'll get into that. So as you know, we've been uh, having the dental practice sales now for 12 years. We have 10 employees, including two CPA accountants, marketing director, operations director, and five development acquisition people. The contact information for us is nationwidedentalpracticebroker.com, dentalpracticeguide.com. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. We are nationwide. Actually, right now we're up in upstate New York in the Kingston region. Absolutely beautiful up here. The mountains, the, uh, the roads are wide open. It's a beautiful ride. Information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes only. It is not legal or business advice. Our phone number is 201-663-0935, and we gave you the the website address. Now, if you're a seller of a large practice and thinking about selling to a DSO, please call us because they'll pay our commission most of the times. So, therefore, the seller does not have a commission to pay. Plus, on certain instances, uh, based on criteria, occasionally we can get the legal fees reimbursed at closing. So we're here to help you in in any way we can, all right? So let's go into today's topic. You know, we give you late-breaking information. This happened last night, okay? We're going to change some of the information so, you know, it's private. Seller got in touch with me with an irate uh, because the letter of intent was created, okay? And during this process in getting together. It's been going on for like three months. The buyer and the seller have been communicating directly without attorneys and without me, the broker, trying to negotiate this deal. We don't agree to that. We don't think you should ever do that because the moment you do that, and this is case in point, there could be discussions which nobody else knows about that the two of you agreed upon that gets translated to a contract and then it's all new information for everybody. In this one, a, a contract was created and the seller had done some negotiations with the buyer. It was something along the lines of a lab that the seller was going to give complimentary lab cases for a period of time to the new buyer as an incentive to buy the practice. So that turned out in the contract well, apparently the buyer and the seller had discussed this topic. Again, we changed the things around prior to the letter of intent, but they didn't come to total agreement on it. It then gets put in the letter of intent by his by the seller's attorney. And the seller becomes irate. Who put this in there? Why was it put in there? And they said, well, it was previously discussed, but on a different issue with the lab cases and so forth. It was never finalized. So we just put it in the contract anyway. And the seller's getting all upset. I said, look, we know it had to do with the lab post-closing. Just tell the attorney that it shouldn't have been in there. It was an error. It's a line item removal. That's all it is to it. But the seller's getting so nervous about this, so upset about this. And this is an example of what happens when a seller and a buyer negotiate amongst themselves. Don't tell the professionals what's going on. This is late-breaking two hours old. This is what happened today. This is what I got to deal with. So now I have to go in there and do damage control and talk to the seller and say, look, this clause that got put in the, by your attorneys, that got put in the contract or the letter of intent, could have been a previous discussion that maybe on a different topic somehow he thinks, well, maybe. Now my seller was really upset last night is really pissed at me now last night, but now this morning starting to calm down a little bit. But these things happen. This is the consequences of buyer and seller negotiating directly. 
on top of the fact that the buyer doesn't have a professional attorney, has an attorney but doesn't really consult with them. So this is why you run it through the attorneys, you run it through the brokers, they can help, they can remember who said what, put it on paper, and it should work out. The last thing you want is buyer and seller negotiating amongst themselves, and then they get into an argument. And then you get into a situation like now, he said, she said, he said, she said. And it gets all confusing. So I'm here, and that's where broker comes in. I'm here for damage control, and that's what I did this morning. But I got a, a pretty nasty email from the seller last night talking about this dental lab free cases post closing, and the seller was really upset about it. So I think we straightened it out. I think the seller had a good night, well, semi good night sleep, didn't sleep well. But once they talk to the attorneys and we get to who said what, and I talk to people on their side, we'll get it. We'll get it together. So these are the consequences. This is late breaking. This is what happens. This is current events. This happened in the last few hours. And this is what we got to deal with. Every single deal has the potential of a roadblock. It's just the way it is. It's a roadblock. And it's going to happen on all the deals, the small deals, the big deals. It's going to happen all the time. So you've just got to accept this and work with your professionals. We'll get you through it. Thank you. What a beautiful area this is. Upstate New York. Gorgeous.